I have some sad news today. News that is so devastating, so catastrophic, you might weep into your Genshin Impact body pillow and not want to leave your bedroom until mom leaves you some alphabet spaghetti, which will open the door, take the alphabet spaghetti, and then close the door again and proceed to weep into the Genshin Impact pillow. This is truly sad and shocking news. And I'm, of course, talking about the company Vice, the media company, filing for bankruptcy. Vice, if you didn't know, was one of the biggest staples of early YouTube. They had some amazing documentaries you couldn't find anywhere else. Like, for example, a UK debt collector who was so scary and so terrifying that anything he said needed subtitles because you basically couldn't understand a single thing he said. I'd have a go over anyone. I said, yeah, 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 come on. They come like, go and have a look around the house, go and have a look upstairs. I goes upstairs, just having a mooch. See, any money, any jewelry. All right, around, I'm looking around, neck and neck and head. Go on, John, go on, go on. Even kind of recently in the past half decade, they had Uber Butler, who is one of their biggest creators. He's the guy, by the way, that everyone says looks like me for some reason. We don't look anything alike. I, I do not see the similarities whatsoever. He'd upload some really viral content. Like for example, the time where he was breaking very bizarre and like niche laws in the UK, like handing a fish suspiciously or cleaning a carpet outside of Buckingham Palace. And also not to mention the fact that he played knock door run on the prime minister's porch. One of my favorite videos that Vice did with Uber was when he opened a restaurant in his back garden and he bought a TripAdvisor to basically make his backyard, the restaurant, into the number one restaurant in all of London. And people went there, the budget was horrendous. They were basically eating canned soup. But because of the whole feeling of FOMO and also everyone was filming, you know, classic manipulation tactic, everyone was just like, yeah, it was amazing. I I'd come here again. So we've been trying to like get hold of them for maybe two months. <laughs> And then they said they had a table tonight, so we just came down. And it's like a really unique place. It's in a shed. Um, it's quite hard to, to get a table. So here we are. And it's quite cool. And even when Vice started off, like like nearly 10 years ago, you had some really interesting docu-series. Like for example, when Mike, the head of Vice and the founder of it, went to North Korea and it actually got so bad that North Korean officials went into his office and they tried to basically apprehend him and he was told not to go into work that day. Vice basically did a bunch of interesting things, looking at a world that you might live in but not fully understand, or just, you know, locations across the world that you'd never be able to visit. But then over the years, Vice fell into a trap that many YouTubers fall into, and it is called the Slop Trap. Vice went from really thought-provoking documentaries to basically setting up a dartboard and throwing darts at it, and whatever the dart landed on, they'd do a video. But the thing is, the dart only had two subjects, something about sex and something about a drug. Oh yeah, and there was a third part of the dartboard at the very bottom delegated to just Donald Trump. The thing is, if you like political stuff, I can understand that. But when I log into YouTube, I kind of log in to escape how shit the real world is and to get away from all that kind of stuff. I subscribed when Vice made videos like the real Walter White or the real Saul Goodman, comparing characters in real life that were caricatures that were basically based off Breaking Bad characters. Now, Shane Smith, who was the founder of Vice, and he was the guy who went to North Korea, the one with the big sunglasses, he apparently got minted from Vice, at one point even spending $300,000 on, on a dinner party, I think, in Las Vegas. I nearly said New Vegas video game reference. And then when he was asked about it, you think he'd be kind of like, you know, not bragging about his money, but he goes, no, I didn't just spend 300k. I spent 300k plus tip. I'm the biggest tipper in Las Vegas. So yeah, long story short, he was someone that made a lot of money from Vice and he definitely wasn't trying to hide that. Now, the interesting thing about Vice is they've always had kind of like edgy, raunchy content. A lot of it has been around sex, drugs, but only recently in the past couple of years, they've gone down this huge political route because Vice is a mostly left-leaning platform and they criticize the right a lot. They criticize Trump when he was in office and so on. But the irony is, Vice is actually backed by Fox News and Rupert Murdoch, both of which are very right-leaning companies, especially Rupert Murdoch, who owns like pretty much all of Sky in the UK. Now, Shane Smith, in the coming years, bought a mansion in LA for $23 million, probably just a bit of pocket change after that huge dinner party. But the problem is now, even though he has so much money and he spent a lot of it, he can't find the buyer for Vice. And Vice was a company at its peak, valued at $5.7 billion. But even though that was the case, no one wants to buy 
by Vice. It's basically a dead company. Thing is as well, though, Vice isn't the only company that's been struggling. BuzzFeed as well. BuzzFeed has had a ton of layoffs. Do you remember back in like 2017, 2018, when I was making video after video saying BuzzFeed le bad and like criticizing BuzzFeed videos and all the commentary YouTubers were doing it, Leafy, everyone. You know why no one does that anymore? Because BuzzFeed completely fell off. Like no one is talking about them anymore. The only time you probably even heard about BuzzFeed in the past five years it is probably those two guys that go around to like a cheap restaurant and then they go to an expensive restaurant. That's it. The problem is with a lot of these social media companies like TikTok Vice, they've been gobbled up by TikTok. If you want to get news and you're not a boomer, what are you going to do? You're going to go to Reddit? You're going to go on the world news subreddit and give someone an award? No, you're probably going to open up TikTok. And the problem is with a lot of these companies, they don't want to just give in and become glorified TikTok accounts. They've tried branching over onto TikTok. I've seen several Vice TikToks, but that means them being absorbed into the company. No one is visiting the actual Vice website or staying informed there. Another reason for their downfall as well is Vice always has been about raunchy content. If you go onto their YouTube channel and you sort by most popular, you'd probably be greeted by some sort of cannibal, some sort of drug epidemic, and then a Brazilian girl's butt. It's content that came from the era of Filthy Frank, and believe me, I miss... I miss Papa Franku. I really do. But that was a different era of YouTube. Unfortunately, it wouldn't fly now. And, you know, people like Frank that got out Joji, he did it at the best time possible. Apparently now, through studies, uh, Gen Z is meant to be a lot cleaner and, like, more focused on themselves, whatever that means. Gen Z being the people born between 1995 and 2010. And anyone born after 2010 is probably going to be... Uh, <laughs> is basically going to be a child scrolling on iPad, commenting, what does blood think he doing? <laughs> Now, Vice did loads of things. I did a quick list, like, for example, the time that Dennis Rodman, the basketball player, he went to North Korea and he actually visited Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea. And they also started a cable network at one point, like a Vice cable network, which was probably the worst time to ever start a cable network. Because as we all know, I mean, do you watch cable? I don't, unless it's like a football game or something. I don't think anyone does. You either watch TikTok or you go onto a streaming service. Especially in the UK, I don't think anyone below the age of 50 actually watches any kind of cable anymore, unless it's for sports because what would you want to watch? A film that came out five years ago and now is so cheap to buy that it's out on like cable TV or some kind of, you know, TV show that's made for like the general public. Why would I do that when I could go on TikTok and look at content that's catered for me? You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to scroll through TikTok and I'm going to show you the very first TikTok that comes on my page. Look at this. I, I, I just scrolled for like two seconds. This is the, one of the first TikToks I get on my page. It's so weird to think, though, that Vice is basically just going to end up being like another AOL or like Yahoo. It's basically just going to be like a shell of a company that's just going to shrivel up and die. Meanwhile, companies like TikTok are just going to keep changing. I mean, before TikTok, we had Musical.ly, which were owned by pretty much all the same companies and shareholders. But now... After Musical.ly dies, we have TikTok, and before that was like Vine. So this kind of short form content where you get like a quick hit of dopamine, it is here to stay, unfortunately. The problem is now, um, I think every single generation after us is going to have some kind of soft attention deficit disorder. I mean, look at this, bro. Look, 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 look. I got, I got to show you something right now. Bro, look at this. 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 Spotify have added like shorts now. Spotify. Look at that. You can just keep scrolling. Every, everything. Every single, like, I remember, I remember when Netflix added, like, a tab called Quick Laughs, and it was, like, with Better Call Saul. It's like, can you not just sit down and watch a single episode of a show? Why do you need to be, like, front-loaded with a joke? Like, to, oh, that, that made me laugh. Okay, serotonin gone up. I may watch the show now, but only on 1.5 times speed. I think the final nail in the coffin for Vice was they were in a ton of debt. One of the companies that Vice owes the majority of its debt to it is called Fortress Investment Group. Now, hearing that, I thought they were based off beloved children's game Fortress Craft, which came out for the Xbox 360, which is professionally known as Poor Man's Minecraft, because that was before Minecraft came out on the Xbox. Unfortunately, there's no affiliation. The saddest thing is, though, Vice themselves came out with a statement, and even they admitted the reason why they fell off, apart from, like, you know, not really evolving their content, kind of like, you know, Angry Joe or Nostalgia Critic, everyone's attention span is just completely fucked. Now brand fandom has fragmented and mainly happens in places where audience engagement is decentralized, especially social media, and it has proven much harder for them to build and make maintain cultural relevancy in those often unforgiving and short attention span environments. I also like how they said vice and brand fandom in the same sentence. Like I'm, I'm wearing a vice t-shirt right now and I do like vice stan edits with like hyper pop in the background or some kind of like nightcore dubstep. I wanna show you 
I hate to admit it, man, but like it, it's TikTok. Short form content has just absolutely obliterated everything. I, I want to say I am so happy that I can still do long form content on main. There, there is a video coming out on main very, very soon this month. I'm so excited for it. It's going to be Oh, it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited for it. I actually fly away this weekend uh, to go to Helsinki to interview the creator of the game. I'm really excited. It's going to be a good video. But anyway, I'm, I'm happy I could do long form content, man, because oh my God, the TikTokification, people complain about the Mr. Breastification of YouTube. The TikTokification is worse. Every single social media app has some kind of shorts feature now because they are so terrified of you clicking off their app or their website and going on to something else. But yeah, I mean, Vice falling off, it sucks, man. They used to make really good videos. I I love watching their series on the real Walter White, the real Saul Goodman. Uh, their drug stuff in foreign countries was really interesting as well. I think they even covered like the bubonic plague resurging in Africa at one point. But now it just seems to be, oh, what? You, you telling me people take drugs in the UK? Oh, look, he took drugs and now he's sad. Oh. <laughs> Josef, wir müssen kochen.